will somehow ensure the higher rates of interest, Mr. Paul tells us, would have prevented what interest can only cause. And of course then, what higher rates of interest can only exacerbate. Ron Paul is about higher rates of interest. And yet then, as even the most rudimentary arithmeticians would understand that while claiming the carrot of liberty is to preserve what is no more than an ever unjustifiable means of exploitation, the higher rates of interest, which Mr. Paul advocates on the contrary, can only multiply artificial, falsified indebtedness to purported bankers all the faster. The more interest we pay against existent debt, on the contrary, the more interest we have to borrow back into circulation, merely to maintain a vital circulation. This is as if to say, falling is bad, let's jump off a higher cliff. Since approximately 1975, Mr. Paul has proudly claimed to be what his colleagues themselves call their pathetic pseudoscience, an Austrian economist. The pathetic claims of this pseudoscience pervade his every word and thought, but they are less recognizable to the person who has yet to dabble in the least discipline which would turn up the many preposterous paradoxes of this preposterous purported school of thought, which, like conventional purported economics, is likewise entirely bereft of formal proof or theorem. Like the regular lies of purported economics, purported Austrian economics is pervaded by even greater extremes of irrelevance and rejection of actual discipline. This purported discipline even disputes the very applicability of arithmetic in developing purported monetary analysis or solution. And its basis for accepting interest while rejecting the only genuine mathematic analysis or modeling of the singular ramifications of interest is merely to claim that the only actual public objection against interest or usury is purported religious sentimentality. They reject the academic proof interest is inherently terminal, proven by no more than simple models of maintaining a vital circulation subject to interest by merely thinking wrongly that this idea only comes from religious sentimentality. But worse and most disingenuous and deceptive of all, to the simpleton at least, Ron Paul is an advocate of banking and interest and the very higher rates of interest which have been proven over and over again, not just in theoretical terms, but in the very patterns of history to consistently be terminal. As we have explained, the First World Depression, the so-called Great Depression, was an inevitable manifestation of interest. As the present multiplication of artificial indebtedness into terminal debt is likewise the inevitable consequence of being implicitly obligated to maintain a vital circulation so long as we can, by perpetually reborrowing principal and interest paid out of the general circulation, as ever greater sums of debt, perpetually increased by so much as periodic interest on an ever greater sum of debt, until we suffer, at the end of each 
finite life lifespan of this lie of economy and inevitably terminal sum of debt. Mr. Paul's purported explanations for present events, therefore, are unaccountable as unaccountable can be. His ever unqualifiable prejudices are no more than bastardizations of science, products of mere pseudoscience, which is as preposterous as the very obfuscation of our currency, which not only cannot serve us, but was fabricated for the very purpose of exploitation, and which means of exploitation happens to be terminal. As we see in this interview, then, as in many, many other interviews, he, like so many purported Austrian economists, even advocates elevated rates of interest, ostensibly to stave the excessive borrowing which he so regularly decries as destructive to us. Never once does he provide an accountable model for how those higher rates of interest would not result in faster multiplication of artificial indebtedness in proportion to whatever circulation we do maintain under them. An example of the roots of Mr. Paul's preposterous Austrian economic thinking can be discovered and easily studied at the Mises Institute's online presence. In an article preserving a November 10, 1977 speech by purported Austrian economist Frederick A. Hayek, this article can be found at Mises.org, that's M I S E S dot org, slash daily, D A I L Y, slash 3204. That's Mises.org, slash daily, slash 3204. In this article, founding member and archetypical Austrian purported economist Hayek is reported to state. Quote, As a result, I am more convinced than ever that if we ever again are going to have a decent money, it will not come from government. Unquote. In other words, he is somehow so unaware or mistaken that the present form of money does not come from government. It comes instead from the very private institutions which Hayek, like Paul, preserves. Yet he, yet he speaks to the evils of the private institutions as if the evils derive from government. And yet never, 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 ever tracing the roots of the problem to the fundamental obfuscation of the promissory obligation in which all the faults exist, and from which, therefore, all the purposed detrimental consequences derive. Hayek, therefore, wrongly tells us the opposite of the truth. As Paul ever so wrongly tells us again and again that higher rates of interest would benefit us, Hayek discusses the very present obfuscation of the currency by the private so-called Federal Reserve Banks as if those banks are federal, not private at all. How more wrong and hypocritical could a person be then in telling us with no more than pretended authority that, quote, Decent money will not come from government. It does not come from government now. It comes from private corporations existing solely for the purpose of exploitation. Yet Hayek, archetypical purported Austrian economists, 
tells us the opposite of the facts. He says the only decent money will not come from government. He only preserves the present lie and exposes the very purpose of the obfuscation in only telling us that the only purportedly decent money, quote, will be issued by private enterprise, it already is, because providing the public with good money, he says, which it can trust, he says, and use, he says, can not only be an extremely profitable business, unquote, can not only be an extremely profitable business, an extremely profitable business, an extremely profitable business indeed, for it is an even terminally profitable business, in the end dispossessing us completely to our inevitable desolation. And yet this is what Ron Paul perpetually intends to preserve. An end to liberty. A perpetual end to our right to issue our promissory obligations free of exploitation. Claiming the terminal result of the present means of exploitation is liberty and even advocating faster dispossession, demise, and failure by higher rates of unwarranted and ever unjustifiable dispossession. Hayek thus indelibly exposes the ulterior motive not only of purported Austrian economics, but of all purported economics. For the lie of economy revolves about a purposed obfuscation of the currency which deprives the people of the, the only rightful issuers of their promissory obligations to each other. This obfuscation, which Mr. Paul advocates without ever a word tracing the roots of money to its purposed fundamental faults, existing for the very purpose of, quote, an extremely profitable business, unquote. This is the very obfuscation Mr. Paul preserves. A terminal obfuscation, a purposed obfuscation, a means of no more than exploitation, an extremely profitable means of exploitation, which Mr. Paul tells us will benefit us all the more if we no more than audit or dissolve the biggest banks, that all banks, all banks, can participate in this stealing from us by no more than publishing our promissory obligations to each other. And then, even more unrighteously, subjecting our promissory obligations to even higher, more destructive rates of interest. It is not even possible to fabricate a greater deception, all the while blaming the purportedly anomalous results on no more than the material the promissory obligations are issued upon, on paper, on fiat. He thus deprives us of the very rightful liberty to issue our promissory obligations to each other. 